wireless technology is the best. Your cell phone can do it, your computer can do it, your tablet can do it, and now your brain can do it too. Trace here for D News with some more about our spicy, spicy brains. We've talked before about using your mind to control prosthetics, robots, and other computerized thingamabobs. But before now, mind control computers were monolithic. Brain computer interfaces, or BCIs, straddle the gap between human and machine. There is no doubt that this technology will reopen the world for people with disabilities. This is Jan. She's 53, and spinocerebellar degeneration left her without the use of anything below her neck for the last nine years. But with the help of some implanted electrodes in Jan's brain and this robot arm that she named Hector, in a matter of weeks, she was able to feed herself chocolate. That was last year, and the dream way, way back then in, in December, was to make that technology wireless so Jan could move the arm without being directly connected to it. And now this is a reality. Researchers at Brown University have created a BCI that's teeny, and it can work for like six hours on a single charge. I wish my cell phone could do that. The first versions of BCIs were bulky and they were hard to move around, but as technology and research has advanced, we're making them smaller and we're making them more portable. People with severe disabilities are not the only ones who are gonna benefit from wireless BCIs. For instance, spinal cord injuries could be less devastating as the spinal cord could be bypassed with a BCI network. As an example, a company called Cyberdyne, it's its real name, invented something called HAL, which is also real, the hybrid assisted limb, and it will soon go on sale, allowing people who couldn't walk to move around outside of a wheelchair. But integrated with a wireless BCI, they may someday just stand up with their exoskeleton the way that you and me do with our bioskeleton. Cyborgs are just around the corner, y'all. Currently, motor skills are the most commonly covered BCI, but with the optic implants that Anthony talked about last week, the network rat brains that we talked about over the weekend, plus a huge history of other crazy replacements for broken or estranged body parts, the future is indeed bright. As technology advances, the bottleneck isn't the electronics, it's the human body. BCIs may be wireless and quick to learn, but they require neurosurgery. Small contacts have to be pressed directly into our brains and in the right place. And after a while, our immune system starts to surround these implants with barrier cells that are trying to protect our tissues. If you've been paying attention to Dean News, however, then you already know we can now trick the immune system into giving artificial creations a pass using a protein called CD47. Advances like this make me excited, but also a little nervous because this is the beginning of cyborgs, right? The melding of human and machine, which is freaking scary. However, the possibility of someone being able to walk or feed themselves or hug their children with the help of a robot that can read their thoughts, I mean, that's too good to pass up. Can you think of other brain-computer interfaces you'd like to see researched? Tell us your ideas. Plus, you wouldn't want to be in the dark when it comes to D News, so make sure that you subscribe. Thanks a million for tuning in. Catch you later.